Hi, my name is Alma Hoffman and I'm an assistant professor at the University of South Alabama, Mobile, Alabama. This is my first year in Mobile and so far so good. I'm really liking it. Um, I will talk to you about my paper, which is titled The City of Ethnos, a personal response to a fear-based discourse in our society. Um, the City of Ethnos is a project I started in 2010 in an unofficial capacity. And when I say unofficial, I was just doing designs here and there. I wasn't thinking about a, a a specific goal um, until 2011, where I started to give it more, more of a shape. This has been a project that has been the result of um, the rhetoric in the media, reports, uh, incidents, and even personal situations that have prompted me to think about um, issues of discrimination, racial, racial profiling, um, immigration, and etc. I believe that as designers, we have a responsibility to, to our fellow human beings to create designs that improve our lives. And um, as the quote says in, our, in the website for the, for the conference this year, design is a powerful order in our lives, and ultimately, design provides evidence of our moral space. What we design reflects what we, where we live in, how we live, and what we believe in as a society. A designer can, you know, design in accordance to that, or a designer can, can question. This is not a new tradition. This is a tradition that has been historically maintained by designers uh, in the past. Um, John Hartfield, for example, who created photo montages in criticism of uh, the Nazi establishment. Um, Litsitsky, who, uh, Anne Chicole, who designed um, political posters um, to either in favor or against the, the establishment at the time, Bauhaus, and many, many other uh, designers who historic, historic, there's historical evidence that as designers, we come to a point where we start asking questions. And it's it just not necessarily about doing something, it's about why we're doing what we're doing. Um, and perhaps it's time that I, perhaps this is the moment where I should start thinking about or communicating to you what is the status quo, what prompted my creation of this city of Ethnos. Um, in 2001, 9-11-2001 marked a, diff, a significant change in the rhetoric of our society. Um, we went from being a society that embraced um, diversity, multiculturalism, to a society that have reacted and have embraced uh, a fear-based um, fear-based policies and laws and, and behaviors. We have um, engaged, we have been willing to accept um, practices um, and a social climate that is pre permeated by fear. Suspect everybody, um, ask questions. Um, if you see something, say something. Um, the, the invasive body scanners, we have been really, when they came out, were really discussed whether or not that was appropriate, whether or not it was invasive, etc. Some of us have witnessed searches on, in the airport to invasive uh, searches to children or, or people in wheelchairs, etc. Um, lastly, but not least, we have seen a, a change in the way we, a, a, a more significant change in the way we behave or we treat immigrants, legal or illegal. And these issues have translated in this, in this hot debate regarding the presence of um, documented or undocumented uh, immigrants in the country. Um, the, the climate, the conversations, and the rhetoric for a moment in 2011, 2012, 2010 were so heightened by this that that was all you could hear in the news. Um, and we are, according to Dr. Noah Tolley, um, Director of Urban Studies at Wooden College in Chicago, the rhetoric that we've been living in is a rhetoric that embraces fear and urges us to act out of fear. And in, in the name of being being protected, in the name of creating an appearance of safety, we are we've been willing to accept these practices. But then, what happens when those practices become uh, aggressive and become uh, and something that politely we can call racial profiling? These hot debates have. This was uh, the changes in the rhetoric after 9/11 sort of made the created the way to engage in this conversation about it was more than a conversation it was aggressive move towards and against illegal immigrants or or documented immigrants at some in some cases, but it's not necessarily 
whether or not they're here illegal, it was, it's, it's a little bit more than that. It's a little bit more, um, as a, as a hostile, creating a hostile environment towards people and where we have been exposed to situations where we are stopped by, um, by a police officer or something like, or, or an, or an agent because of the way we look or the way we sound. So racial profiling has been at the top since 9-11 has been at the top of everything we're doing um, as a society to continue to live in. Um, it is interesting to notice that um, Tony Ducopel, it's a reporter for, um, for, the news, for Newsweek in 2011, he wrote an article titled America's Deported in Chief, um, which he names as Chris Kovac, who alleges that one of the best ways to get rid of illegal immigration is to take away things that are attractive to people for people to come here, such as um, education, work, housing, and even constitutional the constitutional right of being an American citizen when you're born here. When we as a nation are willing to engage in that, when we as a nation are willing to consider that, even when that is something guaranteed by the Constitution of the United States, that says a lot about where we are as a nation in terms of our, our, our core issues, our core mentality, and how we are processing this information. To me, it just feel, it feels, it seems like we are dehumanizing the entire process. Yes, there, there are legal immigrants, but how do we deal with that? Do we deal with that in a way that is completely dehumanizing? Or do we deal with that in a way that honors people because they are people and they deserve to be treated like people? Um, interestingly enough, um, the MIPEX, which is, um, a migration integration policy index rates the United States as the ninth as ninth in the country for friendliness towards immigrant uh, immigrants. Is um, Sweden rates first? Um, uh, this was done by um, this is an article written by Richard Florida called uh, "The Melting Pot That Isn't: Why America Needs Better Immigration," and he states how the MIPEX not only measures um, whether or not we have immigrants in the country, but also the friendliness the probability to be deported, the, the welcoming of um, proactively integrating and, and including immigrants, um, protection against discrimination, and, um, and likelihood of achieving permanent residence. We rate really low. Um, it is very important to note that this, this, this is significant because in our country, he states that 50% of Silicon Valley technology companies have contributed um, to, to developments in technology. Um, and 25% of immigrants have contributed to, to global patents. And if that's not enough, immigrants make up for 47% of science and engineering workers who have PhDs. And the question that, that we need to ask ourselves, do we continue to create a hostile environment for immigrants, legal or, or illegal, and risk at the same time not not inviting, not creating an environment where new talent is, is welcome and, you, and people are being received and accepted because of who they are, the content of their character and the, or the content of their contribution. Um, but the question remains, do we change the status quo? Do we challenge it? Do we, do we continue with it, etc.? Et but the more important question perhaps is, can we really sustain a rhetoric of racial profiling or racial supremacy in a country that prides itself of being a global market or and being diverse, and this is where I come in, um, not to say that they necessarily, but as a as a way of asking questions. I do realize that these issues are not exclusive to the United States. Um, I've been in Spain um, for a brief, very very brief period, and I read one of the best ways when you go to a country to see where the country is and what, are, what issues are, they're going through is to read the newspaper, their newspaper. And in Spain, I came uh, across um, news regarding um, their preoccupation with losing jobs to immigrants um, and illegal immigrants at that. I visited Greece, Greece too, and there was the same tension um, against um, immigrants they had who were hiding and in the in the stores, um, there's a there's a district in Athens where everybody goes and, and shops, and the immigrants go in every corner, lay down sheets of um, where they put purses and merchandise are selling, and they whistle to each other when the cops are coming 
as a way to signal we need to go and they pack really quickly all of your belongings uh, all of the all of the merchandise they have and they just leave so we are not united states is not exclusive in the treatment in in this issue and it's not exclusive in how we deal with these issues but it is where i live and as a um as i said before i was born and raised in puerto rico i was born and raised in a country that um it's not that there's no racism there, but it's more open and more diverse. We're an island, we're in the middle of the Caribbean. So we get asked, we have um, an exchange with people from all over the place. Um, whereas here, when I came in 1993, I was confronted with the fact that I was not just a person, I was an accent, I was a color, I was a hairstyle. Um, and suddenly I became something, something to observe, something to watch, something to study and granted this is not by everybody but it's something you feel when you walk into a place you can feel this tension and at that i have had conversations and comments that have come my way um, regarding my accent and my last name regarding many other issues um, and i started thinking about that and i started thinking why don't why don't we put this why don't we why don't i create something about this why don't i do something why don't i deal with the perception of people in a more direct way and i started thinking about the word ethnicity and i started thinking about the fact that it had nine letters which is almost the same as the 10 value scale in in art you know from light to dark so i decided to paint each letter from light to dark in skin color and as I am approaching the four last letters, which are city, ethnicity, my daughter walks in the room and says, it's a city, mama, it's a city. And I decided, yes, you're right, it's a city. So I inverted the, le the, the letters and I created the city of ethnos, which is a city with the pretense of diversity. It's a city that wants to be diverse. It's a city that wants to enjoy uh, freedoms. But it's at the same time, it, it's, 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 it's a smoke screen, it's a mirror, it's not really real. And that's sometimes how it feels in, 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 it, when the rhetoric is this way, when the rhetoric is all about um, whether or not immigrants should be here, whether or not we, they should be kicked out, whether or not they should leave, whether or not they should be deported. How we deal with this is what prompted me to deal, to create these posters, this, this city of Ethnos. So it is a personal response to wholly debated issues regarding immigration that were going on in specifically in Arizona and Alabama in 2011, 2010, and other related personal issues that I will tell you about as we go. Um, the city of Edmonds has the pretense of diversity. They believe to be very diverse because they will accept 10,000 people. I mean, 90,000 people, 10,000 per color. Um, there are nine colors that are going to be approved, and this is one of the posters I created. But they have a religion, ethnicism, and they have a language which is ethnian. Um, and there are 80% of people are ethnian already approved to be ethnian citizens and 20% who are pending approval um, based on certain considerations that, that I will see in the posters. And before I go on, I want to say this is half a satire of how I see things. This is half... Um, I'm sort of trying to take the things I hear and the things uh, that are happening or that were happening when I created each of these posters and take a little bit of a, of a funny or humorous take on it. Because if we think about them, if we really sit down to think about some of these practices, you just have, sometimes you just have to laugh because they're not just, it's not just, they're dehumanizing, they're, they're really not, um, not sound practices not just because they dehumanize us, but because it shows us, it shows ignorance in our part. Um, so we have a border patrol that is a, also, it's a skin control job regulation where we are very clear to say that there are nine skin colors that are going to be approved because we believe in diversity and we're going to show you how we believe in diversity because we have nine skin colors that are approved. Um, there will be random screenings conducted by your employers when, you, uh, when you're in the city of Ethnos. They will have a little machine that will read every color. And if your color has changed, you will be sent to the center of, det of detention for education and also to pen approval. So because there are only nine colors approved, the idea here is that throughout generations, we're going to clean out the race. We're going to make be whiter and whiter and whiter. So this is a chart I created. And each color, as you can see, has a has a numerical or a number where it can be measured. So 
they're CMYK or RGB. You cannot move from within these colors. The idea, if you move, it has to be to another section that is lighter, um, which I think is really, is fu it's fun, right? It's ridiculous because uh, one of the reasons I created this poster is because my, my skin color, one of the things I was asked when I came here to Alabama, my children, um, my husband, I have a husband who's American, and he, um, a, a woman came to him and asked him if, where was his wife from? Because our children were very dark. And regardless of whether or not my children are dark, the, the question, just someone who just met my husband, the, que the question of where are you from? You cannot be from here because they are dark. That was prompted me to think about things like that, about skin color. We still believe that skin color is an indicator of nationality. We believe skin color is an, is an indicator of ethnicity. But is that really a true indicator in a, in a, in a, in a society in, that de deems itself to be global, where diversity is supposedly a goal? Would, is that really something we should be asking? We also have a system of communications where we brought, we own the broadcast, we own mobile, we own telephones and internet. It's all owned by the city of Edna's and the city of Edna's will of course sanction any idea that you have. You can say anything you want, you can have any idea you want and you can investigate anything you want and express and disseminate your concepts or ideas or thoughts. But it'll have to be approved by the city of Edna's and if it doesn't conform with our values and our um, stand, our beliefs or what we're what the city stands for which is um purification of race and um documented um employment or documented um le legal status etc well it cannot be it cannot be broadcasted um we also have a skin um this requires that you need to approve you need to have the approved documentation to have a job so um if you don't have a document documentation you might be stopped and you, you're not able to prove that you're an Indian citizen, you will be sent to the detention center for a comprehensive investigation and perhaps permanent residence. Um, one of the things this poster prompt came out from was the idea when I was thinking about this, when, I, when all in 2010, the papers laws, um, they were being called, the pa they were show me papers, uh, please. Laws and police enforcements were given um, authority to stop anybody on the basis of what they look like. Um, I started thinking, we treat we treat each other this way. We treat each other. We have this. We have embedded in these laws or in these practices and the rhetoric around them um, about national pride and all of that. All of that, what it does is to treat other people as if they're not humans, as or as if they're less than me because they're not from here or they're not from there. And I started thinking about, do we treat other things that way? Do we, do we have other values here in this country? that we deem to be American, but are they really American? I mean, is Mickey Mouse American? And this is really a, a, a satire. This is, this is really me trying to, to poke a little bit of a hole into, into our belief system. We go to Disney World, we spend a lot of money on Disney World, but neither of the characters are necessarily American, are they? We believe they are, we embrace them, and yet we treat them better than what we treat our fellow human beings. But Mickey Mouse doesn't have, it's not white, and we are very embracing of him. Um, and it's not the idea of being white or being black, it's the idea of how we, what we believe, how we proceed in these practices. Um, so it's Mickey an Indian citizen, unapproved skin color, unable to provide papers. That's why Mickey's hiding behind the fence and afraid that he will be deported. Um, we also have a language, and Ethnian is the only approved and official language in the city of Ethnos. No English, no Spanish, no Chinese, and others, are there, there are not going to be approved languages. Um, and there is the poster here, Love, Freedom, Ethnian Only Hotline Deporting. This came out from a personal experience. Um, my friend, um, my best friend was stopped by a woman telling her, go back to your country because you don't speak English. And she was... Um, she was an interpreter and she was helping this lady in the hospital understand her medical instructions um, and that was her job to be an interpreter and when the woman came and told her this um, my friend made sure to educate her and uh, make her understand why she was doing what she was doing and what right did she have to be in this in this in this soil 
But when we feel, I mean, think about that. The fact that somebody can come to you and say, the fact that someone feels they can come to you and say, um, go back to your country, you're not speaking English. We don't even, add, we don't even value the fact of being bilingual as, as something too um, desirable. We are putting it down. We consider it uh, that your language or your skills are less because your English is this or that, or you're not speaking English in, in a perfect way. That's how we are, how we communicate, what we communicate. To me, things sort of collided. I think being here for 20 years and seeing all of this happen from 2010, 11, 12, sort of, sort of came together and I started to put all of these experiences together in one place, which is why the City of Innos came about. Um, we also have a literary council where um, the books and literature needs to be uh, need to be approved, and reading something else will be a cause for detention in the detention center. This came off uh, from um, in 2011 or 2012. There were news and reports from the state of Arizona removing books from their curriculum because these books were about written by Chicano. Uh, writers who talked about their experience as Hispanics uh, living here in the States or told the story of how the, the how Hispanics live here, um, the experiences they have had, etc. So they banned these books and if some of these books were even written by local authors in, Ar in Arizona, including a book from Shakespeare was removed from the curriculum because it wasn't deemed to be appropriate or um, a supposedly created um, host hostility, but because it questioned the status quo. This is all about questioning the status quo, and I'm wondering, is that where we want to go? So I created um, this poster, the Books Hall of Fame in the City of Ednos, where only ten, nine books are being approved as the official books to read. Um, the City of Ednos has a detention center, as I have mentioned in several of the posters, and this is a place for intensive retraining and evaluation um, in the approved value system of the of the city of Ethnos. This is a place where you know you will be retrained. I guess you could use the word brainwashed um, and you know educated in the better ways of of life. <laughs> and I wanted to give this sort of a twist. I wanted this to look somewhat obscure and mysterious and I put the eyes of the person on the bottom as you really don't want to be here as threatening um, but at the same time thinking <coughs> is that where we want to go um, the city of Ethnos also has an accent police and um, we monitor accents we prefer you don't have an accent but if you're gonna have an accent it shouldn't take any person more than two minutes to understand you so it's the two accent police, and if it takes you two minutes to understand something, well, you will be deported because we cannot have that. Um, these are my series of posters. This is how I came out. Um, what am I? What? Why I'm doing this is because I want to ask the question: Can we really sustain a rhetoric of racial supremacy in a country that prides itself for being diverse? As designers. What do we do? Do we remain quiet or do we do we keep pushing for change? Do we create more awareness? Do we move in light of this? And I know that um, right now this is not um, high in the news. You know, it sort of has passed a little bit, but it's still going on and it goes on in different parts of the world. And it's something that is like the sand in the sea. It is there, but it's not in the surface right now. Events tend to come and go and they bring them to the surface, like the events, the unfortunate events of 9-11. But they're there. They continue to be there. Issues of racism and prejudice, they continue to be there. They continue to, to just linger with us. And when all of this was going on in 2010, all these issues about the laws being passed, it just, to me, just come, it just kind of came to a point where I, I felt I had to do something. Um, lastly, I want to... I want to leave you with the question of, is racial uniformity a sustainable goal in a global market? And it's something for us to think about. Um, is it sustainable? Is it really, lo is it even logical or reasonable to expect that? Um, and I want to thank you for your time. And these are my sources. Thank you so much.